Hey guys, so if you saw the video that I posted before, you'll see that I've been trying to get a court date uh, for a misdemeanor warrant. And, you know, I haven't been assigned a department. I've simply been told to show up at the Hall of Justice, despite the fact that other cases have been assigned to specific departments. So let's go ahead and figure out what's going on. And here's the courthouses right here. That's the administration, court executive. Let's see what happens when you try to call. Here we go, and we've got a, whoops, let's go ahead and get out of that one, and let's go with 408-882-2700. There you go, that's the number. It matches that one. That's the administration. It's got pretty much everything on there. It should be a, a good central point that will get me transferred into the correct place. And how do I put this on speakerphone? Uh-oh. Let's see, speakerphone. Has been reduced or suspended during the COVID-19 pandemic. Information regarding changes to court operations can be found by visiting the court's website at www.fdscorp.org. If you have a specific question for the court, Please press 8, then 0. Provide the following information. Your name, case number, email address, current mailing address, telephone number, and the nature of the question so that we can respond to your inquiry. Thank you. So it says, I've called it before, it says uh, 8 and 0. 8? Please hold while I transfer your call. No messages may be taken for this mailbox. Thank you for calling. So you can see that uh, there's obviously a problem, right? And what, we, what I talked about before was this idea that we have a, um, a black box, some sort of you know, star chamber of uh, justice or of a legal system that's claiming to be a justice system. And one of the ways that you end up in this position is by not making things transparent. Now, apparently, you know, there's supposed to be something called the Brown Act. Brown Act. Uh, let's see if we can, you know, try to figure this out. So um, you see that this is something that is, you know, a fairly substantial deal simply because you don't want the idea of a government doing things in secret. And this is open meetings for local legislative bodies. This is way back in 2003, so it's been around quite some time. Um, I've been told that it does not apply to court hearings, uh, only to public meetings. So, yeah, looks like, you know, looks like my, uh, my contact was correct. And we're just going to go through the court system here to see. But you can see that the concept is really that, you know, you have to have an open, you know, can't have an open society without having a transparent government. And you certainly can't have a democratic republic that's a functioning one without having a system in place that allows people to, uh, you know, essentially figure out what's going on on their own. And this was the promise of the Internet. Uh, the whole idea was that you didn't have to rely on, you know, people within the government. You could simply go online and figure out what's going on, and this would improve democracy. Uh, simply because you, you no longer had to go to a middleman, and you know because of that, the middleman had to also upgrade his or her analysis in order to be relevant. And what's really happened here is that because of these old older technological systems, then you've got on the one hand a newspaper business and a media business that just failed to upgrade content. Um, and, you know, as a result, became irrelevant, especially with the rise of you know, social media. Um, oh, look, it's got something here. Governing bodies, coverage. Okay, that, that might be um, legislative bodies. So, huh, look at this. Isn't that pretty interesting? The people do not yield their sovereignty to the bodies that serve them. So that you can see that the idea, the people insist on remaining informed to retain control of the legislative bodies that they've created. So you can see again that, you know, after the internet, there was this optimism and idealism that it would actually result in a, in, in a, in a government that was more responsive. 
And on, and, on, and on one level, that's happened. If you look at the DMV, you can get your license renewal online now. You don't have to wait in line under an antiquated system. But of course, what, what, what does that do with the union system that preserves jobs at that level, at that entity, regardless of any benefit to the public? Once you have these new systems that render a lot of what they do um, either inadequate or obsolete. And the answer here has simply been debt. You look at, you just take out debt and then you stack a, a new layer on top of the old layer. So the old people keep their jobs and they have seniority. So within the union system, they stay within that system. And then you've got this sort of second tier trying to move up within that system who are basically waiting until the, uh, the, the older workers die off so they can move in. Um, you know, so you've got, let's see, we're just trying to, let's try to see if we can get that. It's all legislative bodies here. Uh, legislative bodies. It's really odd, right? Because public testimony. Oh, it's still, still legislative body. Mm hmm. Yeah, it looks like you're, you're still looking at a situation where you're really dealing with city councils. That was really one of the main targets here. Um, and so you can't have a legislative body whether it's a city council or a state legislature going in and trying to, you know, uh, do things behind people's backs. Although there's, there are exceptions because as you saw, let's say there's negotiations with unions that settle or with employees that settle. And despite the fact that taxpayer money is being used, we often don't have a right on the city council level to figure out what is being paid to employees that have, uh, that have filed employment discrimination cases. Um, and we don't know where the money necessarily where that money is coming from. So you, and you still end up with a black box somewhere that has the potential to overwhelm uh, just the idea of you know transparency. So it looks like um, you know maybe there isn't a Brown Act violation here, but um, you can see that you know why did we in the U.S. you know oppose in principle the Soviet Union? Well, we opposed the Soviet Union because of this idea of a star chamber, this idea that you had a system in place that was not transparent, uh, that was based oftentimes on paying off law enforcement or judges or somebody in the government in order to get things done. Now, you can see now th things are online, so it's harder to do that, um, you know, in, in most cases, because you at least have a paper trail or a digital trail. That wasn't the case 30, 40, 50 years ago, right? If you, you could be arrested by a police officer, let's take the worst case scenario, uh, in the Soviet Union, and you, would, you wouldn't necessarily know what to do. So you would have to go to a clerk and maybe pay that clerk off in order to figure out where your case was. Uh, you could have default judgments. You, could only, you can only imagine the level of corruption that's possible within a system that's not transparent. That was the complaint that, you know, that the U.S. made against the Soviet Union, that it was not a transparent system. Um, and in response, the Soviet Union essentially privatized a lot of its services um, after it collapsed in 1991. And, you know, basically had its empire crack up. And so, you know, you've got this idea, you know, in theory that the United States is different from the Soviet Union. But in fact, it's quite similar because all empires are similar in, to the extent that they, did, that they try to extend influence uh, over people that are different from them in foreign lands, which always has, you know, which always gives rise to the opportunity for miscommunication and misunderstanding, which eventually if it's not addressed, eventually creates a breakup or a, or levels of unsustainable debt in order to cover up mistakes, whether that's payoffs to civilians killed uh, in Iraq or overseas, uh, whether that's simply just secret nuclear testing grounds, um, you know, that expose local populations outside the empire's main base to uh, danger. And that's actually the United States as well. A lot of people don't know that. I thought the Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico nuclear testing. Because you have to remember that, um, oh, look at that. So, so it looks like that, you know, because it was already used, um, this isn't giving me the, the searches I'm looking at here, but let me take a look over here. Uh, Puerto Rico nuclear testing. Um, but, you know, it's not just the Soviet Union that did this and, well, that's odd. Let's see if we can do a little bit better, better job over here. Puerto Rico, USA, Gov, secret testing. Let's try that. Well, still got the internet there. 
Um, you can try this on your own, I guess. Uh, let me see if I can go to a different... Uh, let's try this one. Will it work over here or... Yeah. So we go back over here. Um, wow, this has got something here, but not the one I'm looking for. Uh, um, let's try that one. You know, there's just, you know, remember the internet is, is, is not the full sort of smorgasbord of information. It, it puts in people that, um, here we go, for testing. Um, well, this is actually, yep, we've got bombings here. It dropped 23,000 bombs in 1998. Uh, it's cancer rates. So... Depleted uranium. That's what I was looking for. Um, you see how it's a little bit difficult to find radiation experiments. There you go. Um, I mean, you can just go on. This isn't. This didn't just happen to, to one country, right? This is what empires do. It's not just the Soviet Union uh, that does this. Remember, it's just it's a part of of empire. Um, this is just what happens when you have an empire, especially one that's based on debt. The, the Soviet Union tried to get there without debt. That was what, what was interesting, and it failed because it was competing with essentially a competitor that had unlimited money uh, to bribe its way through friendships and allies uh, in order to oppose the Soviet Union. So we have this idea of, of the Soviet Union being completely corrupt and being and censoring uh, critics, which, which it did. Stalin actually went all the way over to Mexico, Mexico to kill Trotsky. Um, let's see. Stalin murdered Trotsky. Okay, so that one's pretty... So you can see how easy it is to find this, right? Because again, the internet is... We're looking at a US-based protocol. Um, and, you know, this is interesting. I've been to the house of um, Diego Rivera and his wife. Uh, Frida Kahlo, and they hosted Trotsky uh, over there. So you have you, you also have this pattern of artists taking in uh, people that are quote, quote unquote dissidents. But my point is, with respect to this issue here with Santa Clara County Superior Court, you know, again, the idea is, has always been that there's potential for for a, a complex system or one that is not transparent to op offer the opportunities for bribery and also simply to uh, allow governments to censor. Uh, by covering up or by excluding, mis you know, their own mistakes, and so in this case, I think this this misde misdemeanor charge is completely frivolous. Uh, but if you can take it off the calendar, it makes it harder for people to, for someone who's a subject of that frivolous prosecution uh, to be able to, you know, number one, communicate with the DA. There's no place to stand. There's no specific person that takes the blame for being involved, and so it very much is similar to a covert agent uh, trying to operate. Uh, against a dissident of some sort, uh, which is, again, something we complained about the Soviet Union doing. But, of course, the Soviet Union had to, you know, this is also another feature of empires, is that this whole thing, this idea of projecting influence uh, among a class of people that are different than you are, based on military power, inevitably results in human rights violations. And so what ends up happening is the honorable people within those countries try to you know, publish. They try, try to do what journalism is supposed to do and reveal these facts. At which point, because, again, the, the concept of an, of an empire is that it always becomes corrupt because it always tries to overextend itself, at which point censorship becomes the only option. And people think that the internet has allowed more transparency, but I'm, I'm sort of, you know, you have to look at it from the other perspective as well, that it, you know, a digital world is actually a world that can be more easily manipulated in terms of information simply by not putting something there. And we know that the we know that we're not looking at we know we're looking at a sen a censorable uh, platform because because there's been instances where Hollywood stars have had their photos leaked online and suddenly all those photos have disappeared after about a week. So we know that when pe the people involved, whether private corporations or the government or a combination of both, if they really want to, they can make information disappear. Which means that as of today, right, the information that you see is not the, the, the complete buffet of information 
that is out there. It's simply what the corporations and the government want you to see. And that's really been another battle within empires is, is do you tell the truth and then, and then risk losing your status as world arbit no, as, as world, you know, arbiter of morality and human rights and so on, which then allows you to promulgate a legal platform that you can export along with a security platform, along with, you know, a banking platform and so on. Um, you know, the idea of an empire ultimately is exporting your ideas and your values. So if you really do want the truth, you run the risk of allowing too much information, at which point, you know, if you're right, the critics prevail and you're no, long, you're no longer taken seriously on the international level, which then creates problems in terms of exporting your, your culture and everything that goes along with that, especially, you know, the idea that other countries would benefit from your presence. And, you know, again, this has always been a sort of cover up whenever an empire, you know, gets involved in minority affairs, whether domestically or, or abroad. The idea has always been that whether it's the Spanish Catholics coming into Mexico and stealing the gold and silver um, while building churches and roads, uh, the, the well, not so much the roads, but only within the Zocalo area, um, whether it's, you know, the Russians, you know, testing uh, nuclear weapons in other countries or taking over farming collectives, uh, individual farmers in order to increase food security. Uh, that was, sorry, that was the Soviet Union. Um, you know, and, and whether it's the United States test using Puerto Rico, one of its, you know, um, its colonies, essentially, for testing, it's all the same story. And with the digital, you know, situation, you know, we now have an, the idea that we're stuck in this era of fake news, but not really. It's always been fake news. It's always been propaganda. And the reason for that is because of that tension between the empire needing to look good in order to export its debt its currency and its values, all of which are a part and parcel of the same uh, package, all, you know, balanced with the idea that if there is too much truth, too much transparency, then you can't do all the things that the empire wants to do. Because in many cases, it is really in a position where it's trying to exploit minorities domestically, uh, whether by elevating a few of them to the top in order to, say, you know, divert attention from the fact that uh, say, African-Americans as a group still have a zero net worth. Uh, African-Americans or something else, right? Um, net worth, Federal Reserve Study. Okay. Um, okay, so here's another right here. So black families, median and mean. Wow, that's... Uh, that's something, right? Of course, that has to do with inheritance, right? I mean, you know, the African Americans, because of laws, right, have not had the, and Jim Crow, have not had the opportunity to, you know, basically inherit wealth. And, and a lot of the wealth in this country is, is based on inheritance. Um, and so the, the Fed's got, you know, there's just, there's more than one Fed, right? There's one in New York, there's one in San Francisco. They all publish some really interesting stuff. Um, and, you know, you can see that, you know, this this idea of the of any empire, you know, first of all, it has to project this, this idea of, of being a meritocracy, uh, which, of course, it's not. And, uh, you know, none of them are. And it gets really more, it gets more difficult when you try to have diversity because, you know, you're, you're in many cases only trying to, you know, take in a few members uh, of that minority class into your system, uh, whether it's the President Obama or somebody else. By the way, President Obama's father was African, who was also an immigrant, I believe, um, and so, you know, whether it's trying to do those sorts of things, um, you know, or whether it's simply more brutal, uh, you know, for example, going over to the West Coast of Africa and, you know, getting these things done. So anyway, I don't know who this is, but maybe I'll, you know, let me see what it is. Hello. Yeah, that's, that's just a... Uh, Okay, um, I've, just, I've got this number on a do not call list, um, by the way, so I'm kind of surprised I'm getting these robocalls. Um, it, uh, that's, that's something that might be a, a useful tip. You can go to ftc.gov and ftc do not call. You have to put your number in the system and then uh, you have to wait 
30 days or 31 days. Uh, so first you have to, I actually have to register first, right? Uh, and then wait 31 days and then put your number on the list. Uh, so anyway, I, I know I've, I've covered quite a few things, but again, the idea really is that if you think that any one country or any one people or any one culture holds a uh, monopoly on justice or on the correct way of doing things, don't fool yourselves. Uh, history is littered with the graveyards of empires all over the world, not just in Afghanistan. Um, and the real problem for us, the honest people within society, is trying to figure out how to balance ourselves within these structures that require, in some cases, um, censorship in order to maintain the credibility and the legitimacy of the existing government.